I'm going to apologize ahead of time, this is a fairly long story. Live in Wyoming, won't give out any more location info. Take over dad's old cabin, refurnish it and go in a woods regularly. My whole family used to go camping together all the time, but we stopped as we got older slash busy. Not me. Always would go out to clear my head or just for some fun. Been saving up a lot of vacation time slash money to have a few extra days off. Ask around, all my friends and GF are busy. Disappointed, but fuck it we can do another one some other time. Back up my stuff and bring my German Shepherd slash nigga Baxter. It was around fall, so it was really beautiful out. Baxter's happy, I'm happy, life is good. Get to my cabin, haven't been for a few weeks so I have to restock everything, but it's actually in pretty good shape. It should be, I spent a small fortune fixing it up. Spend the rest of the day setting up, by dark I'm cooking dinner and watching TV. The X-Files, the Flukeman episode. Want to get the Halloween slash fall feel before going to bed. The next day Baxter and I are out walking the trails. Recently I had begun to walk over them and explore on my own. Dad always warned me not to stare too far, but that was when I was like 12. I'm a big boy now. We walk on, and nothing is out of the ordinary. Birds creeping, sun shining. Walk for a bit and Baxter starts getting anxious which is weird, he's usually fine in the woods. Another 5 minutes and I find this old stone building I've never seen before. Like really old, could be early 1900s era. Some of it's still standing, but I can't figure out what it was. Either an old stone house or some type of mill. It was all overgrown and the back was collapsed. I decide the absolute smartest thing to do would be to check it out. Inside smells like really strong cat piss, also has some leaves and shit inside. Obvious signs of life are obvious. I'm smart enough to know not to fuck around in someone's living room. Me and Baxter get the hell up out of there. Unsling my M1 Garand, you can never be too safe. I'm keep telling myself I'm just spooking myself. Every little crunch or snap off in the woods has me on high alert. Get back to the main trail, when I hear a big as fuck snap, like someone snapping a limb off a tree. Only something very large could do that, I crouch and ready the rifle. Baxter get down with me, we sit for a few minutes. Figure we can wait it out completely expecting a bear to come charging, but nothing. We get up and walk on. About 50 or so yards before the cabin I hear it again. Don't crouch, but pull the ultimate dumb blonde in a horror movie. Is anybody out there? I'm armed so don't be fucking around. In my defense, I didn't want to shoot some kids or a drunk hillbilly. But yeah, that was some Scooby Doo tier shit I know. Nothing, double time it back to the cabin. Baxter is inside, sleeping. But I'm on the porch eating and watching. Nothing happens for the night, and for the next day. Laugh at myself. More than likely was just a bear. Go shooting slash hiking slash fishing and enjoy myself. Come back from walking Baxter and see a blood smear on the side of my cabin. Somebody tossed a goddamn squirrel at my house. Looked like it had been manhandled before breaking its spine off of my shutters. Assume there's some axe murderer stalking me, stop going out on hikes, and never leave my cabin. Don't want to run either, this place is mine, and I'm not leaving early. Next day it rains, stay inside and watch TV or read books. Realize I'm an idiot as I only brought scary horror movies slash books and murder mysteries to creep myself out. Walk by the windows, always feel like I'm being watched but that's probably just nerves. Have a gun in every room. Next day the rain clears. 
I get outside because I forgot some folding lawn chairs, but whatever they'll dry. All broken, every one of them. They were only like 15 to 20 yards away from my house. For future reference, this is when the shit starts hitting the fan. I'm definitely being stalked, I've been hunting enough before to know that. And whatever it is gave its last fuck a while ago and I was late for the show. Which is bad. But, I've got my cabin, plus my jeep plus a surplus of firearms, thank you based Wyoming. Which is good. If I had known how crazy it was going to get I honestly wouldn't have stayed. We've had bears and shit before, and usually if you stand your ground and shoot at them they leave you alone. Sitting inside, reading Stephen King's it, because fuck it at this point, when I hear another thud, this one just to the right of my front door. I don't wanna open the door I don't wanna open the door. Open the curtains, see a bloody possum still alive, somewhat twitching. And .o.p. He go upstairs to my granddad's war chest and pull out Samuel Goliath, his M14 he smuggled back. Load that sucker up, my .44 Ruger on my hip. I already said every room was armed, but that was just like a 9mm per room. Pack up everything else in back in my back. I was still thinking it was some maniac killer, and I didn't want to have guns everywhere if he got inside. Have all my guns slash supplies in bags in the living room in case I need to bug out. Next morning possum is still there, now dead. Toss it back into the woods and yell something to the likes. Why don't you come out now in the daylight you fucking pansy? Of course nothing. Since I'm feeling brave I walk the tree lean. Whatever was out here broke some more of my shit, lamp posts that haven't worked in years, another chair, my fire pit. Fear is slowly being replaced with rage. Get Baxter, decide to test my balls in the water. Walk a little while into the trees. I'm a dumbass I know. I'm officially the fat guy in the slasher movie that hears a scream and says he'll go check it out by myself in the dark. We walk for a bit, the further we go the lower Baxter gets and the more he whines. Don't need Caesar Milan to tell me he's scared of being in someone's territory. In the distance make out a familiar shape. The stone building from before. We've gone too far this time scoop old buddy old pal. See a tall grey chimney in the back that I didn't notice before. Shit on a dick that chimney just moved. That's no chimney, and it's not Yogi Bear. Can't make out what it is, but it's pretty tall and slender and grey. Raise M14, yell hey. It sways slightly, then does this awkward for leap and dash to the side into the bushes. Get possessed by Tom Cruise from Born on the 4th of July, fire off rounds like a madman. Think I hit it, definitely heard a groan screech. I know I'm ripping off that Goatman story where he says it sounds like a cat talking, but that the best way I can describe it. Don know if I hit it, it could have been a battle cry for all I know. Fast walk back to the cabin. Don't want to run especially if I'm being hunted. Make it home in one piece. Pack dot everything. I'm leaving tomorrow, would tonight but I'm not driving around in the dark. Not even the Almo is worth this shit. At the very least I'm coming back with friends. Have everything. Repacking to keep myself busy when I hear Baxter growl. Not deep angry growl, like when the mailman comes to your house, deep back of his throat growl. Take out my .44, and walk slowly to the kitchen. Nothing, no monster but Baxter is low and snarling to the window over the sink. There's condensation on it, but in one spot like something was breathing on it. And just to make sure my therapy lessons are worthwhile, a handprint on the glass. Stare at it for a few seconds, almost start laughing at how ridiculous this is. The print was too long to be human. Take a pen and put in at the point where your finger meets your hand and see how long it is. 
like that long. Rifle over my should, revolver on my hip, I walk from room to room double slash triple checking to make sure I have everything. Have seen the place this empty since I inherited it. I'm really just keeping busy, if I sit for too long I'll go stir crazy and I had since given up on ever sleeping again. Had Baxter on a leash to keep him close, but soon took it off. Poor guy wouldn't leave my side. And I hear a thud again. Then another and another. Check the front, dead raccoon. Disemboweled. Check the back. Rock. He ran out of animals. Check the front. Dear leg. He found another animal. Then I remembered we had these searchlights I had forgotten about that you could turn on from the den. We used to play volleyball well into the night when we were little, so dad put them in. I juggled with the idea, I didn't know if it would scare him off or piss him off. Plus I didn't really want to get a good look at whatever it was. That's when I heard another thump. But this was was different. It was going in a horizontal pattern along the outside of the walls. It was smacking the sides of my house. My legs were shaking and I'm surprised slash proud I didn't piss myself. Grandad used to tell me stories of Vietnam, how you know the enemies is there, but you grip your rifle to the point your knuckles hurt and you wait. But how the waiting is the worst part of all. Fuck it. I turn on the floodlights and walk to each window. And that's when I finally saw this ugly bastards. I'm not green texting anymore because I'll run out of room and I want to this justice. So I'm going from room to room, and I'm not seeing anything. I'm getting more and more relieved, thinking I scared it off. I went to the window right under where the lights were and I saw it. Well. Actually I saw the dead deer first next to the tree lean, all bloody and torn up to all hell. But I then see this thing. Now, I've read through a lot of creepy pastas and slash x slash threads, watched a lot of those hunting Bigfoot slash Goatman shows, and they all have a lot of similarities. 7 to 8 feet tall, red eyes, smelled blood in the air, face leak a gorilla and build like a brick shit house and I can get why people who study them think of them as some missing link to evolution, because yeah they do look like some long lost gorilla relative. But whatever in the hell this thing was did not. It was tall, not really tall, but I'd say around 6'3 and slender long arms, those long fingers that will molest my dreams for years to come, but it face wasn't like a It was more like a baboon. Long and droopy. When I googled pick related, it gave me chills to see it again. It wasn't colorful, but like a black reddish color that matched his fur, which was surprisingly sleek. His eyes were yellow, probably the only relatable thing to the other cryptids and the light surprised it, like when you turn on a leg and wake someone up. It then glanced at me and we had a Clint Eastwood stare down before it snarled back its lips showing the yellow baboon-like fangs. It screeched like a bat and did that same side to side leap back into the woods. I closed the curtain, checked the lock and curled up with my rifle until morning. When it came I made one trip with all my things and drove like a madman back to town. And that pretty much it. My friends and I went back a month later, some of the shutters were broken off and there were some scratched but aside from that it was fine. I've been camping since then, but only with a large group, no tents, and not that deep into the woods. I told my friends and family everything, they all more or less believed me. I'm not the only one with a weird hunting story, though I'm sure mine is worthy of some sort of prize. I told my GF's dad, who an avid hunter, and he just shrugged and matter-of-factly said. Yeah, shit happens if you go out deep enough. And then in the most deadpan serious tone. Those woods aren't ours, not all of them at least. I've been looking into cryptozoology and into those Goatman threads, and I have yet to read about anything like what I saw. 
I don't know if I found some inbred Bigfoot or found some kind of new thing that nobody knows about. I've been meaning to ask around to a lot of the local Native Americans, they of all people would probably have a legend of it. It still bothers me how we spent so much time out there as children and never saw anything quite like that. Like it could have been watching us the whole time. I asked my dad and he's just said the same thing as my GF's dad. I still have yet to sell the cabin, probably never will, but whatever. For all that it's worth it can be that thing's home now. <laughs>